Good afternoon guys, hopefully you guys are having a good day so far. So I came across this typography on Instagram, it was by Panda Design Co. And I thought it was pretty cool and I wanted to replicate it and show you guys how you guys can do this for yourself. So I'll, let's start. First thing we're going to do is just create a new canvas. I'm going to make mine 11 by 11 inches, resolution 300, RGB color mode. Um, I'm, I like the square 11 by 11 inches just because I like to post on Instagram every once in a while. So first thing, we're just going to create our background. Um, so you can create adjustment layers here. It's a very simple way. We click solid color. And I'm just going to go with a light pink, just how they used it for the sake of simplicity and show you guys an example on how to replicate it. Layer zero, I'm just going to delete it because I don't need that anymore. Next, we're going to create a new layer. And it's going to be our text layer. And the font I'm going to be using is Chunky Funks. It's a free font that I found online that I'll put the link in the description so that you guys could use it if you guys want to. So for me, I'm just going to make my text white. And it, it works best, this effect, if you have a, a really big, thick, or fat um, sans serif font. So Chunky Funks, obviously, it's in its name. It's pretty big. And I'm just going to use whatever uh, Google because I think it has yeah, <laughs> six, six letters in it uh, for the sake of simplicity. You guys don't have to stick to that. You guys could just use any words you guys want or you, you guys don't have to do two lines like this. I just did that for the sake of example. And next, you're going to want to just highlight this and then click right here on this little fo uh, folder icon. And this is just gonna pop out uh, the character properties and the paragraph properties. If you still can't find it, you can always go to just window and go to character right here. And this window should pop up. So all I'm going to do is increase the spacing a little bit. So tracking where it says VA, I'm just gonna increase it to 200 just to space it out a little bit more. And that should be fine. Now we're gonna create that 3D effect. So all we're gonna have to do is just click right click and duplicate layer we're going to call this 3d and so you can always just press Control j as a shortcut as well Control and j and that'll just copy the layer as well if you that's just another shortcut so now our 3d layer all we're going to do is um, change the color so if you want to select your text tool highlight it and then it doesn't matter what color it is as long as it's brightly different from the background or your text and now the 3D layer, the one we made red, we're just gonna put it underneath. So now the white one should be on top. And with the 3D layer selected, we're gonna press Control T. Usually you can use the move tool as well, but for this next step, you have to press Control T or free transform it. And all you're gonna wanna do in this little selection, you're gonna, on your keyboard, you're gonna press down once and to the left once. So down and then left and press enter. Now to create the 3D effect, we're gonna do this several times, about 40, but I can't, I don't wanna have you guys duplicate the layer, free transform, press the keyboard down and left. Do this 40 times, it'll be very tedious. So the shortcut for this, all you have to do is hold Control, Alt, and Shift on your keyboard and then press T. And this will repeat the last two steps we did. So then we're gonna do this until we have about 40 layers. 10 layers and then the more you do it the bigger the 3d effect you'll have so this is right now 32 layers i'm just gonna have it even and i'll do 40 layers so as you can see the more you do the bigger um 3d layers honestly you can do this until you have 100 layers and have this like a stand like a shadow type look so now to organize ourselves we're gonna do on the 40th layer we're gonna scroll all the way down and then hold shift and then click on the first 3D layer and that'll select it. And then we're just gonna group these into a folder and I'm gonna call this 3D. And it might make your Photoshop run slow if your computer's a little bit slower. So a trick you can do to this is just right click and merge group. That'll just put all the 40 layers into one and it'll should speed everything up. So this is our 3D layer now. And now we're gonna add that rainbow coloring to the 3d layer so you're going to want to double click on color overlay to layer style and then we're going to go to gradient overlay and then we're going to click right here to our gradient editor and then if you don't have it you can just click on this cog reset gradients and okay and that should give you 
back your gradients <clears throat> and you want to click on transparent rainbow or this one honestly it doesn't matter as so whatever rainbow you want i'm just gonna go with transparent rainbow and then i'm gonna find the angle of the colors what direction i want them to go in i want the red to be in this corner and i do like that i think um negative 40. no i want a little bit more red to show negative 30 for me will work and then for scale uh you can make it bigger smaller um play around with it a little bit see what you like i'm gonna go with 125. and then press enter <clears throat> then on our 3d layer with our gradient overlay we're gonna have to rasterize it so we're gonna right click and rasterize layer style because what we're gonna do next won't affect the 3d layer if it isn't rasterized next we're gonna create an adjustment layer a brightness and contrast layer so all this is gonna do all we're gonna do is lower the contrast all the way and increase the brightness a little bit as you can see it's affecting the background and we don't want that so to do this we're gonna create a clipping mask so with the brightness layer selected you're gonna to want to hold alt on your keyboard and press and see right here in between these two layers you'll see a square with an arrow and you want to and just while holding alt you want to just press on your mouse and there you go all this does is make make it so that this brightness layer only affects the layer underneath it so now this the background layer isn't affected then we're going to create another adjustment layer for hue and saturation before I do that, before I start messing with that, I'm just gonna create another clipping mask. So I'm gonna hold all and click in between. So these two layers are now only affecting the 3D layer. Now for saturation, I'm gonna lower it a bit because I feel like the rainbow is a little too strong. And then I'm gonna raise the brightness because I want more of a softer rainbow look just to, um, I think it looks a little bit nicer. And then for hue, you don't have to touch that. You can move, mess around with it if you want maybe a different colors, organizations, in whatever way they are. So I'm just going to press zero, leave that be, and I'm going to press enter. And that's it for me. Um, negative 25 and plus 25 just to give it that soft rainbow look. Next, we're going to create the outline. So if you look here, we're going to create these outlines. We're going to make it so that it looks a little bit more wiggly because these aren't perfectly straight. They look a little bit wiggly as if they were hand drawn. So all we're gonna do on our Google layer, we're gonna press Control J just to copy it, and then we can just rename that outline. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and we're gonna click Convert to Shape. And then you should get all these lines and you wanna click on your tool, on your shape tool. So you guys might have a different one. You guys might, might have a line or a rectangle, uh, but as long as you guys find it, you, it'll work and then we're gonna go to these settings and on fill you're gonna want to click note color and then for stroke you're gonna want to make it whatever color you want it can be red purple blue doesn't matter uh, I'm just gonna go with a purple that I have already set and then we're gonna increase the width of the lines so uh, on right here where it says one pixel this is this, the width of the stroke I'm gonna press 20 20 pixels press enter so you should see some lines so that's perfect. Um, if you guys want bigger lines, make uh, the width a lot larger if you want. I'm gonna keep it at 20. Next, for right here, the settings of the stroke itself, you can you can click for dotted ones if you guys like that look, or for line look, I'm just gonna keep a straight line. And for a line, I'm gonna align it to the outside, so it's outside the letters. And I'm gonna click round caps and corners, round corners as well, just to give it a round look. And then, all we're gonna do is just, you know, you can click away on another layer and you can see that the lines go away. So on our outline layer, I'm gonna move it outwards. So control T and I'm just gonna move it up and to the right a little bit just to offset it a little bit more. Um, you guys can move it however you guys would like to offset it. Um, <clears throat> So I see right here that um, the, the E's and the G's are a little wonky just because of my stroke. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger and that should fix that. Next, I'm gonna add that wiggle look. So on filter, we're gonna go to filter, we're gonna click distort and we're gonna go to wave. It says convert to smart object or rasterize. I'm going to rasterize it. And the number of generators, um, you wanna keep it between five and 10. 
and then wavelength you're going to keep it to one and then 99 all this does is just more or less of a wiggle and then amp amplitude you don't want to mess with that so minimum one max two and then scale you also don't want to touch that undefined areas as repeat edge pixels and then type is sign and you press ok and that should give you a little bit of a, of a wiggle look if you still think it's not enough wiggle you can always increase the number of generators so um, if you wanted to you could always just go to distort wave you know rasterize it and let's say like 20 and then you press enter and it'll give it more of a wiggle look as much as you guys want the more generators you put the more shaky look it'll give and so that it's the effect entirely so i hope you guys learned something new maybe a new technique or new skill that you guys can apply and hope you guys found this very educational so thank you guys and have a good rest of your day